Uh, welcome to Nerds Geeks in the Kitchen Sink. It's the podcast that's like hanging out at the video store, but today it's like hanging out at a bookstore. Bookstore. Uh, we, have yeah, our, we have our old pal A.G. Mock with us. AG, howdy, howdy. Thanks you, thanks you so much for being <laughs> here. Thanks uh, you also. <laughs> we're so happy to have you. Um, thank you for squeezing us in. I know you're very, very busy with this book. Yeah, oh, um, so busy. And we'll, we'll jump right in if you want to get yep. going with that. Uh, horror sure. author. Uh, what do you got going on? Well, first of all, I have to say, what a look at this. How what a boring background. <laughs> look, all right, look at Chris. He's got all this sexy stuff. I see a baby a Yoda, a little Grogu, and yeah. some other cool stuff. Now let's go to DK. Yep. Yes. Where is yep. Look, Every there you are. Picks, yeah. Look, look at all that. And then look at me. Blinds. But you're a busy man. <laughs> you're the professional well, no, I, uh, author here. I mean, oh my you, can't have, you can't have these distractions while coming up with that's infinite true. horrors. Uh, yeah. That's no. true. <laughs> that's true. Anyway, I apologize. I'm on my iPhone, not the laptop like normal. You're fine. But, um, no wow, worries. so much going on. This is such a busy time, right? So we have yeah. um uh for just a quick rewind in case any new listeners watchers are tuning in and haven't heard of me before so i'm ag mock and i write horror um supernatural thrillers i think i prefer and mine are very gothic yep. so um the series that i'm working on now is actually called it's two things actually it's called officially the new apocrypha mm -hmm. trilogy and um it can comprised of the little woods the first book disciple the second and the third shadow watchers which comes out october 31st nice. um, i have tweaked things throughout the journey this past two years and while it's still the new apocrypha trilogy it's part of the gothic horror series oh, and awesome. yeah so when, when i'm writing other um books even short stories or maybe even little chat books um they don't have to be related to the new apocrypha, but they may fall very well into the, the gothic horror series. So for me, that means, um, gosh, how do you how do you explain like gothic horror? To me, that would be, you know, um, like demonic, like really dark and atmospheric. In sure. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I, uh, when you yeah. say gothic horror, I think of like, christopher lee and like peter cushing and uh yes castles right? and yeah castles and yeah and dark stuff and demons and and ghouls and all that um as opposed to say slasher horror which would be like friday the 13th and mm -hmm. you know right. like maybe which we, halloween which we just celebrated yes yeah <laughs> right exactly did you do anything and, fun on friday the 13th well, that was, um, we can't give any spoilers away, but I will say that was, if you saw my Facebook feed, that was officially Simon Peter's birthday. Oh, oh okay. Mm. So for those Fans who will know. Yeah. Yes, for yeah. those who read Disciple Book 2, there's a very, very critical character called Simon Peter, who's a young boy, and he was born um, Friday the 13th, October 13th, no less, 1995. <laughs> Which I was asked, well, was that really a Friday the 13th? Was it really a Friday the 13th in October that year? Right. And it was. Yeah. <laughs> I did the research. AG Mock does the work. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've got to put, put in the hours. <laughs> so my buddy Simon Peter, that was his birthday. So I celebrated that. And um, you either love or hate that little kid, I'll tell you. He, uh -huh. gets, uh, he gets mixed reviews. So... <laughs> um, yeah, really that and just putting the finishing touches on Shadow Watchers for it to be out October 31st. Um, I always work pretty close to the deadlines. Sure. Um, I, you know, I'm at this stage of my career, I'm not one to drag out, you know, a series for multiple, multiple years or, you know, one book per year. So for me, Shadow Watchers really wanted to come out by October 31st, and that put, I'll be honest, it put a lot of pressure on me. Sure. Uh, with everything else that's going on, and I've been in the middle of a book tour around the country, actually. Um, and that continues this coming week, which we can talk about in a, in a minute. But nonetheless, it will be out, and I'm exhausted. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I find that but when I have a project I, like this, right? having, having a firm date like that is the only way it will ever get done yeah you right. don't have a date like this it's not happening 
Right. And my house has never been so clean. They say, if you want to get your house clean, give a right or a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you're like, okay, so how do I motivate myself? And you have to sort of start doing these sort of more menial tasks that take a different part of your brain where you can almost do them off of, you know, muscle memory. Yeah. Um, so it's been a lot of that kind of stuff over the past few months to just free up my thinking brain so that whenever I sit down, I'm able to sit down and really get the most out of those hours in front of the computer. Sure. And I'm happy to say it's worked, it's, but it's been exhausting. I've done like upwards of anywhere from on average, maybe five or six, but upwards to almost 20 pages in certain days, which oh, is, wow. yeah, which is a lot. Then did you, lot. could you give George mm -hmm. R. R. Martin some notes on how to do that? <laughs> it seems right. like he might need you some beat help. me to it i literally was thinking <laughs> you're gonna say that yeah so yeah and then next year i will make an official announcement which i always break these with you guys you yes. know that. i love yes. you guys we love it um, awesome yeah so drum roll next year i'm going to absolutely commit to two books a year and it could be actually three awesome. oh, but it, yeah but it will be an absolute commitment of two per year um so i'm really in that um stride right now so shadow watchers is not only important because it finishes this particular trilogy but it also got me into that that frame where i'm now working my days the way that i know they need to be worked i want to ask you i want to ask you about that so with this being the third in the trilogy without obviously spoilers or anything right will this be the real conclusion to this or will, is it going to be wide open for more? Do you plan for more? Can you say, oh, no, it'll be, no, it'll be a conclusion. Okay. Um, no, I would hate to, I'm very okay with now little, let me just pause there. The little woods, the first book could be read as a standalone. Yes. Right. If you yeah. read it, you enjoy it, but you're not like that into it, let's say hypothetically, and let's hope that doesn't happen. But <laughs> if, if that were the case, you could read it as a standalone book and not move on. Um, I'm happy to say, however, and it does have a cliffhanger, but it's also one of those cliffhangers that are, I don't know, maybe I need to think of a better word than cliffhanger because it sort of is a cliffhanger, but it's also one of those ones that as a standalone novel, it's more of like a thought catalyst. Maybe that's a better way to put it's it. Does more, that make maybe, sense? Maybe you'd say it's an ambivalent ending that could kind of go a couple right. ways, but, yeah. but it's yeah. still a good ending. Yes, and a thank you, and it and it makes people think. One of the I'm really proud of the fact that one of the comments I get that are recurring about the Little Woods is exactly that. People say like, "Holy shit!" Like I put down the book and I haven't stopped thinking about it for the past week. That is a huge compliment, yeah. right, for a writer because you, last thing you wanted for them to go, huh? Okay. Let's make dinner, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, gosh, because after all that work, right, all that blood, sweat, and tears, yeah, and true. passion, and and fear, and everything, to have that kind of response would be just mortifying for me. If you want to know what scares me, that would be my nightmare, <laughs> <laughs> right? A group of people, right. group, group of readers, just looking at the book, putting it down on the last page, and going, "Okay, that was okay." That would be a nightmare. Um, the fact that people are staying on like a recurring. Um, statement along the lines of it really made me think or i can't stop thinking about it or it gave me nightmares and i every you know every few months i go back and reread it and i find more things more easter eggs that really tickles me sure. but it can be read as a standalone disciple cannot <clears throat> book two has to really be read mm -hmm. after book one right. um and the thing is though you could finish on book two <laughs> right just like you could finish on book one there is again one of those and you know thought catalyst one of those you know ambivalent endings where it ends definitively but there's a real big occurrence that takes place and i like to do these by the way if you've noticed almost like almost to the last page right Mm -hmm. Right, like right, like my sure. MO is beca becoming that I don't give you the big climax, you know, 30 pages from the end, and then go through right. explaining the next 29 pages why that happened. And I would rather build it up naturally and organically throughout the story, and then like really just smack you with that ending and then finish yeah. it there or within a couple of pages tops. Right. Um, and Disciple, Little Woods does that, uh, like literally last page. Disciple does that yeah. last page. 
This one is going to do it right up to the last two pages. Um, but it will be a definitive ending. There won't be a cliffhanger. It won't be like, well, what the hell did I just read? I don't want people to feel that they wasted the time. When when you add Little Woods at 411 pages, um, Disciple at 305, I think, and Shadow Watchers at 313, you're talking over a thousand pages for this yeah, trilogy. Absolutely. Right? I don't, and I want people to enjoy it and it's never a waste ever to read anything, right? I mm. think people should do a whole lot more reading. Sure. Um, and if you love what you're reading and you're enjoying it, then it absolutely is not a waste. It's something that's fantastic, and like, you know, an addition to your life and enhancement. But what I really want is for those things to be met, those conditions. And then thirdly, for people to say in like, wow, that was a really badass trilogy, not like, wow, that was awesome up until like that would suck for me. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to hear those words up until. Right. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> and you know what I mean? Oh right? yeah. You know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We've all experienced it with books. We've experienced it with films. So there's absolutely a definitive ending, but what's cool about it is that, um, there is a lot wide open that is while I'm still ending the the story, there's a lot wide open for me to build in the universe. It's sort of like Mandalorian builds on Star Wars. You know, right. you could watch Mandalorian if you've never even watched a single Star Wars episode. And while you get more out of it, having read Star Wars or, or uh, watched Star Wars, you can still watch a Mandalorian series, right? And enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm well, going to have you... books. Will you cry when Luke Skywalker shows up? I don't know. You'd have <laughs> right. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> Maybe that was just you. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I actually, I really liked what you said, and I want to go back to that when you said um, about you know, some, maybe the quality of something that you're reading might not be the best, but it's still if if it's if it's working for you, it's working. Right. And I want to give a good example. I, and I've talked about this on the show recently, but I, I'm kind of going to give an update here. I've been reading. I finished the I read the Halloween novelization from the Halloween oh. the movie. The movie Halloween okay. had a novelization right. the same year Halloween came out in 79. And the novelization is interesting because it has things that the movie doesn't. Um, and you kind of don't know, like, whatever was actually intended. Did Carpenter have any say you don't really know it's all kind of a mystery right. but but it all kind of goes back to this sort of like druid horror thing it's very interesting and that's supposedly the catalyst for michael myers doing these murders right they don't do a okay. whole lot of that till later in the franchise right. but anyway i think back then probably that book would have been considered to be pretty trashy uh, honestly right. you know uh but but reading it now is like an absolute delight and i'm on to the second one they did they did a novelization of pretty much all of them and i'm oh, having wow. such a fun time and you know maybe a normal person would see oh the, the novelization of halloween 2 no what <laughs> but i am in love it's it's not the best writing i've ever read it's not the most interesting i've already seen the movie too like i know everything but this novelization is like scratching the itch and it's it's doing its job for me so I just right. I really liked what you said about that, yeah. and it's like I feel better about me reading that if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. Listen, the 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 worst thing that anyone could ever think is I must read what other people are reading, um, and I wish people when they would do reviews, and it, I'm not just talking about for me, but like I abhor seeing really awful reviews on anyone's work for a bunch of reasons number one you're taking someone who is a creative right who put blood sweat and tears into what they have produced whether it's you know a book a tv a, a graphic novel what a movie whatever sure. um and to just track that after all of that sweat no one sits there and does this thing and this is shit i don't like it and i'm not passionate about it i mean right. you can't do it you cannot put those hours into it whatever you are creating um, so I wish more people would say, you know what, this wasn't for me, but it doesn't mean that it, it's the fault of the creator. It's just that it wasn't a fit for me. You know, I don't like coconut. If we, if you've seen, and I know you guys have, right, Zombieland, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And Woody Harrelson's character, is he Tallahassee? Oh yeah. Or is, yeah. It, is that, is that his name? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And he's like, and he's like, um, snowballs. 
fucking snowballs remember yes <laughs> and he's like and then but then he's so he's sort of like sort of sweet right you see that soft underbelly he's like well listen i want to say it's not that i hate snowballs in particular i mean i'm okay with coconut it's just not for me it's the textured thing you know it's the consistent <laughs> right exactly though right. yes let right. me ask you let me ask you something because you bring up a, another thing that's been a discussion here lately did you watch the new uh, exorcist film have you had time no. So my, my, the way that I operate guys is whenever I'm like in, I, I'm always in the deadline. Cause like I said, next year will be a guarantee of two books per year and I'm going to try for three. So I'm always in the deadline, but when I'm in like an intense deadline, like I have been, and that happened with disciple as I was getting that out for December last year. Um, it's happened with shadow watchers now over the past like eight weeks. I really, when I'm in that frame, I can't, expose myself to i have to stop reading other people's horror novels right i have to stop watching horror movies um i can watch stuff and i can read try to deliberately move like outside of that realm because what i don't want to do is accidentally ever like appropriate something so even right. on a subconscious sure. level absolutely you know mm -hmm. and then someone and then i would i would hate for someone to say Oh, well, that's just like so-and-so. Now, if somebody reads any of my stuff and says, boy, that reminds me of something, then that to me is great because it, it just means that, you know, few minds had the same thought process at some right. stage of creation, but it wasn't because one of them copied the other, right? It was, you know, two of us have come to the same conclusion and presented it maybe in different ways. Parallel so I thinking. won't. Yeah. Yes, that's a good way to put it. So yeah. I won't, I'll deliberately like avoid all things like that. So I okay. didn't see, I, I can't wait. So like for me, when I'm done with the book and my final edits go tonight, um, so I can send it to press at midnight, um, <laughs> Shadow Watchers, right? <laughs> then tomorrow onwards, not that I'm not busy, I've got a lot of stuff coming up, but I can actually like in my downtime, I can actually move back to picking up. I've, I've got a few horror novels, um, by like there's one that uh, was sent to me from jb arnold who's a great author he just came out with a new one i think it's e exit 203 if i'm i hope i'm oh. doing his title justice he sent me that one and just launched you know i'm dying to get into that but i can't do it until after this right. is sure. so completely understandable after, yeah yeah i just i just thing. wondered because that movie's getting trashed in in reviews oh no um, is it uh, well and we but, did our review last last episode but Chris didn't like it so much. I think it's okay. Um, and a lot of people feel somewhere in between. Um, See, now so, the trailers look phenomenal to me. And again, with the whole review thing, you know, right? I'll never review something bad. I will say this wasn't for me, right? It, it didn't like hit the mark for me. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad product. Right. Um, and again, I wish more people would take that. Stand. Absolutely. Sure. But... I think what happens is that people, a couple of things, I think that they don't take a breath before, and the internet is not helped with this, right? People don't take a breath before they just start going for the jugular Absolutely. for anybody, for any reason. You can say, I like Twinkies, and they can say, you're a fucking idiot. Twinkies are the worst, right? It doesn't matter how innocuous the subject, suddenly people go for it because that anonymity has created this weird Absolutely. where we don't even have to, we just go straight for, it's called an, an, an amygdala response, yeah. right? We go straight for that amygdala response, which is fight or flight. It's easy um, to do. Right. It's easy and, to do. And, right. And in most cases, on like online, it's fight. In other words, aggression and all this stuff. Rather sure. than giving it, just taking one beat to let our logical, conscious thought processes take over. At which point you can say, you know, this person worked their asses off on the, the exorcist beginnings or whatever. Believer, right? Believer. Yeah, believer, yeah but maybe it wasn't for me or it missed the mark or whatever, rather than just trashing it. I'm and with you though. I, I would rather hear that kind of review. I, I don't think there's any reason for this. This is just downright mean sometimes. <laughs> it's right. Sometimes and it's it's wild. It's unnecessary as well. Um, I've seen a great quote and um, I can't remember who it's attributed to, but it basically said, remember, you'll never be criticized by somebody who's doing more than you. Mm, interesting, and if you yeah. think about it, that makes sense. Because anyone who's doing what you're doing or more has been where you're 
standing. They've been sure. in their shoes. And so they're not going to just start trashing any, any real author that's worth their salt, in my opinion. And if they want to come at me for this, then fine. So be it, because if they do, they're exactly the people I'm talking about. Proving my <laughs> point, <laughs> Right. Any real author and everyone that I know, and I am super honored to say I've gotten to know a lot of phenomenal authors recently, and, I, and I'm knowing more and more by the week, literally, and not a single one of them, not one would go after another author because they didn't like his work or whatever, because they've been there and they understand that, right. okay, it's not for me, but it doesn't mean it's trash. It means that it's not for me. I don't like coconut because i'm with Tal tallahassee the consistency <laughs> tastes weird for me but the, it's not the flavor it's the consistency it doesn't mean that snowballs are a terrible product they're just not for me <laughs> this so, episode brought to you by snowballs yeah right <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm open to sponsorship deals <laughs> twinkies too. yeah host twinkies oh, call me wanna, yeah. yeah little debbie yeah for sure you got my number little debbie <laughs> yeah. now I, I will say in, in regards to specifically that movie I've done so much like research and study on like the, the rights novel, of exorcism, the rights, you know, the, I mean, right. I, I'm Catholic. So, I mean, there was just a few things in that I really, and, and I didn't trash. You did the, your review. Wasn't actors. Me. No, no. I, I'm just saying just in regards to, you know, the actors, I thought for what they had was phenomenal. I thought I understood kind of where they were going. My biggest thing is that I didn't agree. If it was, if it did not have Exorcist in the front of it, I think I would have probably enjoyed the movie more. Well, when you see the okay. word Exorcist, the Exorcist, you, you know, have certain because, expectations. I mean, I, and like I said, you know, between like, you know, Delivers from Evil and all the Exorcist movies and Pope's like Exorcist, the Pope's Exorcist, and you, right. you know, and and each one of those I've taken for themselves as what they are because like to compare the pope's exorcist to the exorcist no but right. i enjoyed it for that you sure. know but it, it kind of like some of the products that i have there's a certain principle that's laid down and even if you want to change it i see where people go with it and for the fact that they want to build something else i am like all for it mm -hmm. but right. you know like I and said, it, 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 it didn't it, hit the mark for you. No, no. Like no, I said, question, in all though. honesty, if it, if it did not have, did not promote that this was, you know, a, a direct sequel, mm -hmm. I may have enjoyed this a little bit more because there were some scenes and I, I really kind of. Right. It's fair. So you had, you yeah. had expectations. See, and I do too. Yeah. And that's, that's different from saying like, it's just trash. What you're saying yeah. is that, okay. It may not be for me, but that's because I had these expectations right. and for me, they weren't met. Yeah. And see, now I may very well next time. And I just saw, by the way, the Pope's Exorcist, because if I remember right, one of the last times we talked, I was yep. working on yep. Disciple and yep. said the same thing. <laughs> we like, talked about I can't, it. Yeah. Like, I can't watch that. Don't tell me what. Because uh, right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on my own. Um, and yeah, I just watched that and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But personally, I enjoyed the Pope's Exorcist. I oh, thought it was a great we movie. We did too. Well, I think I I remember, did. But I it's remember not an Exorcist movie, no, is it? No. When it's, you were I here, thought was, I thought it was tongue in cheek. It, totally. When you were here, I was like, mm, I don't know if I like the Pope's Exorcist. But then I saw the movie and I was right. like, oh, it's so fun. It's a fun, right. it's a yeah, fun movie. Is. There is an exorcism, but it's like a fun adventure. I was saying it's almost an Russell adventure Crow movie. Then is drinking coffee yeah. and going around on a scooter. Yeah. Uh, right. This it's, is it's amazing. Like, it's like Indiana Jones meets The Exorcist. Absolutely. Right. Do you yeah. think? I thought it was like that. Um, and say, if you know that going into it, then you can enjoy it more. Right. But I'm with, I'm with you, um, Chris, where I haven't seen exorcist believer yet but i'm going to go into that very much with the expectation that this see that to me the exorcist is gothic horror now yeah. you you can be like you said dk you can have gothic horror that is you know that old school very shallow, gothic yeah yeah mm -hmm. but and this and that's part part of it too but for me gothic horror is that dark pervading evil right. that evasive sure evasive thing that um 
that you just can't quite pinpoint, but it, you always have the chills going down your back. You're always right. waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? That sort of dark, that dark feeling all the way through it. Um, atmospheric, yeah. yeah. Yes, atmospheric. And for example, for me, if Alfred Hitchcock had worked on what we would consider today horror rather than mm. just thrillers, right? Mm. If he came at it from like a supernatural perspective, rather than coming at it from like human fallibility perspective, mm. then to me, he would have been a phenomenal horror director um, in the sense that, in the sense that we talk about horror today, as opposed to I classify him as thrillers, right? And that's because he has what they call, have you ever heard the term the MacGuffin? Yeah. Of course, the bomb under the right. chair. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> you just, it's just that constant pervasive, evil that darkness that foreboding that is following you all the way through the right. novel the film whatever and for me exorcist is that 100 mm. percent. it's to me that's yeah. gothic horror it's supernatural it's spiritual it's dark it's demonic it makes you it gives you goosebumps and even if you don't believe in it i would hope that some people might and same thing with my books i would hope that some people might be on the fence after they read if they weren't a believer beforehand thinking like you know what <laughs> that was sort of realistic like i think that yeah. that could actually maybe happen right maybe there's more to the spiritual world than i am letting on or admitting to to me that's gothic horror as opposed to just a slasher film and there's nothing wrong with those but you know that's a different kind and then you have um like Grady Hendrix does horror, but he doesn't do gothic. He does mm -hmm. that. He does that, like, again, that tongue in cheek, like my best friend's exorcism and things yeah. like that. Right. Right. So there's and it's all often like a, And that was, like a, that was a fun yeah. movie. Right. But see, yeah. it's like fun. Horror. Totally different. Yeah. Right. And I hope that my stuff is fun. Um, you know, in the Little Woods, we're band banding back and forth between 1977 and 1995. Uh, Right. So yeah. there's a lot of fun stuff. You know, I'm mentioning things like Fleetwood Mac and, uh, you know, the Rolling Stones with, you know, Paint It Black, their song. And so the cool stuff that was happening in the 70s right. um, and the way that kids spoke to one another and the things that they did in the 70s. Um, and then same thing with the 90s. And then Disciple kicks off in the 90s and goes to 2005. Um, now we're going to go from, well, I'm not going to say from when, but we're going to go up to 2000. Okay. I will say we'll go up to 2011, and that's where the okay. trilogy will stop. I do like that but, aspect of this of these yeah. books for sure. The time, the time travel, if you want to call it that, whatever the time jumps. Right. Um, oh, well, thank I, you. Yeah. I think those that's a really neat little uh, tool that you use. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, it, I, think, I think it takes you away from the reality of today. Right? We've got enough, <laughs> and that's all horror and all movies, right. books, whatever you read. And, and you were saying, right, DK, about, um, you know, you're reading the novelization of the Halloween. Yeah. Well, again, it may not be for someone else. It doesn't mean it's trash. The fact that you're right. reading them is phenomenal. The fact that you're enjoying them is phenomenal because you know why it's taking you out. Number one is taking you out of everyday life, which sure. is critical. The yeah. greatest thinkers in the world will actually bow to the fact that fiction in whatever form helps them escape and come back to reality and do what they do better and right? i think it helps people process reality in some way right you can filter your reality through these fictions and correct. come up with a truth yeah right you know there was a study in and i think we might have mentioned this before there was a study um after covid that actually a scientific study that actually showed that individuals who read horror or watched it in TV and movies were better able to psychologically cope through the COVID, the intense COVID years, yeah. 2020, 2021, right. because of that, because, um, and it's not, I don't think people would say, oh, that's because they're desensitizing. I don't think it's that. I think what it is is coping mechanisms because you psychologically, you emotionally, when you, especially, I think when you read, yeah. you are learning coping skills, your brain and your mind and your emotions, you're learning those skills, right? On um, like, how do I get through this? Like, how do I process what I'm going through right now? Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important, particularly with novels, because while I love movies, absolutely, and I'm a movie junkie, I love novels 
for the fact that they make you use your own mind. Yeah. And there's nothing more terrifying than what you'll find in your own mind, right? <laughs> when something happens and you're imagining it, it will always be more thrilling, more scary, darker, more grotesque, whatever it's going to be, right? Yep. Um, than what a producer could do or CGI could offer up. Right. And that is, I think, just a fact, which is why people always say the movie was good, but what do they say? The novel was better. Novel the was book better. was better. Yeah. 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 Usually the and case. Not, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's because of this, right? Because they're using your 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 own imagination. And if that's the case, then it makes complete sense to me that people who engage in horror as a leisure time activity, particularly those who read it, are actually learning coping skills, which help them in day-to-day -day life better. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, yeah. Do you think? I fully agree. Oh, absolutely. I, I really, I know that for yeah. a fact, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think no the question. biggest thing is like, you know, even whether it be real life or fiction, understanding and like navigating trauma or right you know like you know some kind of happening in regards to like the like trauma or situation or you know even even per se fictionally with dealing with evil right know, i think real life on top of it you know you you have a better like like you said coping skill to navigate through no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And if you think about it, let's let's use like an example. <clears throat> How it, it, that there there is real truth with a capital T to what you're saying because if one reads a novel and finds one crying, laughing, startled, whatever, it's because one's read this, assimilated it, processed it, and it's elicited the appropriate, hopefully, the right. appropriate emotions, right? There's a reason why when you read Nicholas Sparks' novels, and he's just the master, in my opinion, there's a reason why, if you've ever read one, if not, I highly recommend them, because they're not stoppy romances. They are extremely well-crafted, intelligent, relationship-based novels that deal with drama and trauma, and that is so much of everyday life. And I don't care how big and burly you are. If you read a Nicholas Sparks novel and you don't get like a little bit of a tear at some stage during the 300 pages, then you're probably a little bit of a psycho. <laughs> because, <laughs> right? Honestly, because yeah. he's, he's touching on such emotive topics in such a real way. And whenever your imagination then gets involved and you, the two of you are running hand in hand through this story, it becomes right. real. It becomes like you said, um, it becomes real trauma, right? And you have to learn how to process and have, how to cope with it. It's why when you close a book, sometimes you're just like, oh, I feel like I have to breathe for a minute, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like I need Absolutely. to process all that. And yeah, and so for sure, I love that whole processing part of it. And, and I think for me, that's why novels will always be scarier, more funny, more thrilling, more sad than, you know, you'll ever get into a, into yeah. a, into a, a into a movie it's my opinion it's just one of the many powers magical powers of books i think yeah, i think you're totally right. right absolutely yeah i uh, will say uh nicholas sparks that you mentioned him is like my wife's one of my wife's favorite authors and i have i have on downtime of not having a new book myself and i annually i i kind of picked up christopher lee's uh habit that the end of October into November, I read The Hobbit and the <laughs> Lord of the Rings trilogy. And then you're starring oh, you several do? Dracula movies. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm still working on that one. Come on, but, I would uh, love you to be Dracula. Come on, imagine. I, I won't say what I did in my younger years when I was overseas. What would anyway, your Dracula be? Hang on, what would your Dracula be like? Would you be more of a Gary Oldman or would you be like a Christopher Lee? Like, do you think you'd be like a creepy Ooh. old, like, floating around kind of like oh dracula or would you be like a <laughs> would you be like more of a, a, a passionate creature like a gary oldman i would be neither what the remember oh, the old canadian show where the vampire was he was like a night shift detective no i don't remember that one what was it's it called a, it was, oh god why are you describing the ultimate tv show that i've never heard of 
It, I was, know, right? it was like an 80s TV show. It only did like a couple of seasons. It was a Canadian. The guy, I can remember the guy was blonde. Um, the very first pilot, they actually had Rick Springfield play the guy. Oh, really? How 80s is that? <laughs> That's very 80s. That's funny. But, but I'll have you. to look it up. But yeah, that would be me. So what's I would the be the vampire that? detective, yeah. Mm. So I'm you're really a, sure. you're 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 the undead killer with a heart of gold. Yeah, kind of well, I always said more of a <laughs> Dexter type. Not okay. so you wouldn't yeah. want to use your powers for good, sort of. Sort of. Like you're still murdering people, but yeah. like maybe people who but deserve it more by like exactly. moral standards. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, look! I'd they, I'd watch they, your show. Yeah. I'd read your yeah. book. Yeah, they deserved it. Why not? So, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody oh knows gosh. I'd be more of a a, a passionate lover. You would, you would be uh, more I'd of be a Gary Oldman, a, a sexual dynamo. I think the people werewolf know that on I, the bench. Yeah, I, I would know. be seducing people left and right, and it would, it would be mainly that. it would be mainly that. <laughs> um, I can see that. However, yeah. I do have to say, Dustin, that you do need the coiffured yeah. white. Oh, the two, the ball, brains, the two, yeah. the two bulging, it. the two bulging cerebrum type of like I'll things that he had. No worries. <laughs> I could see it. That would just be smoking. Oh, I'll rock it. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys want to do? Like, we have our little horror trivia. Let's. Why don't we hop into that? Unless there's something else, Chris. Let's, no, let's hop into it. Okay. Well, we'll do that, and then AG has got something special going on in a week or uh, two weeks. Why don't you tell us about that while I why don't you tell us about that while I open this? Yeah. Okay. Well, the the first one, by the way, my Facebook readers, this is another like breaking it with you guys. Um, Uh on this coming Saturday, so depending on when people are watching or listening to this, but Saturday the 21st of October, um, I've been invited. This is super cool. I've been invited to the Barnes and Noble in Annapolis, Maryland. They have a brand new event called Blood on the Bookshelves. And this is the first That's annual one, name. hopefully. That's a great title right? for it. Yeah. And um, some really amazing authors are going to be there. Probably the biggest headliner, or one of them, is Richard Chismar. And do you know this gentleman's name? He, he wrote uh, Becoming the Boogeyman. His sequel to that just came out, Chasing the Boogeyman. Um, Gwendy's final task. He works with Stephen King and co- is co-written the Gwendy things. With, I okay. think with him, if I'm Ooh. not mistaken. Very cool. Um, yeah. yeah, great, great author. He's 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 going to be there. Um, Mike Salt, a gentleman who's uh, becoming friends. I hope I can say um, who's all the way out. I think is in Oregon. Um, he's flying all the way across the country. Literally, he does the Linkville horror series of books. Uh, so Mike Salt's going to be there. Uh, just i think there's like eight of us if i'm not mistaken oh, awesome. but yeah that's going to be this coming saturday from 2 p.m to 6 p.m it's called blood on the bookshelves barnes and noble and napolis maryland and that is i'm super honored just to have been invited so i'm excited about that and then in two weeks time it's halloween yep. and i have my first annual halloween arcanum which I don't know if you guys know about. Do you know about the Arcanum? Yeah, I, I uh, actually, we sh- when you first came out with it, I shared it to a lot That's of our, right. our guys. I appreciate that. I love that. Thank you. Yes, I forgot. Um, I'm excited about the Arcanum. It's, it's something that I may do in some form or other each year. I haven't decided that yet. We'll see how this one goes. But um this one is specifically related to the Little Woods uh, novel. It is a three-day, two-night event. It takes place in Pittsburgh and an undisclosed location, which is where the real Little Woods is. Oh. Um, it was inspired by real events, the novel. And um, it, it was held, I, I, I deliberately said 12 people, but if anyone is a reader and they're interested in my books and they've been following me, they know that that would never truly be the case. It was always going to be 13. <laughs> right? Ah, yes. So um, the the 12 chosen ones, which actually became the 13 chosen because I, I knew that all along. Um, so the 13 individuals could buy tickets and that was it closed after the 13 done. 
D U N N D U M. Is that spelled right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yes. Ten points. Great. Yay. <laughs> I win. So, um, and tickets went uh, for anywhere from six hundred and sixty-six dollars, of course, to nine hundred ninety-nine. And um, beautiful. But yeah, and I sold out within almost sold out. I think I think I had one ticket left within two hours of releasing it which yeah yeah, a few months ago and then i sold that final one just a few days later which i'm super excited about so uh we're all going to a event what was a what was a real convent in pittsburgh i will announce now for those who don't know um, if you've come to any of my appearances or book signings this summer you'll have heard this but if not then i'll announce here publicly that the convent is actually featured in shadow watchers oh yeah so yeah so we're actually going to the convent the old the previous convent in pittsburgh pennsylvania that's featured in shadow watchers we'll be having uh the monday night we're going to have um when everyone arrives we're going to have a an exclusive vip launch party for shadow watchers very cool you know all yes. all food all drink included you're going to get a copy of the book handed to you from me on monday the 30th pizza party um, i hope <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Big party. It'd be a costume party as well. Um, everyone's going to get merch. I'm going to do a reading from the book. But again, it's awesome. just for the it's just for the 13 chosen ones who who how cool who is that? Bought tickets. Yeah, yeah. It really is cool. Thank yeah, I've, you. I've yeah. seen photos of where you're having everything. You know, almost oh, where yeah. you're having everything, and it looks amazing. And it really does. The Thank people you. that get to go just. Lucky sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so fun. And I'm so excited that people were as excited as I was about it. And that you are too. So thank you. Because, you know, you never know. People might have gone like, eh, sounds sort of interesting. Right. But it, it wasn't. I mean, the fact that we sold um, 12 of the 13 within two hours um, was phenomenal. And um, the next morning then, which is Halloween, we wake up. We're going to have breakfast together in the convent. And then off we go. We're, we're, we're getting ourselves into a little minivan, a little minibus, and we're heading two hours away, a road trip to the real Little Woods. We're going to act. I've got permission from the landowner. Um, we're going to go to that neighborhood. They're going to see where I grew up, which is Ian's home in the book. They're going to see a lot of the other homes from the characters that are mentioned. We're going to go down to the bottom of that neighborhood. And we're going to park up. We're going to go down that tractor path through the field. And we're going to hang it right at, at the Twin Ponds and go to the real Little Woods. I hope you don't um, disturb any ancient beings in there. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope we do. That would be more fun, right? <laughs> that would be an added bonus. Um, yeah. And then uh, after we jaunt through the Little Woods for a couple hours, and we're going to look for the Father Oak and all these things. And, you know, I haven't been there. It's inspired by real events. Um, I haven't been there myself, guys, in like 40 oh, wow. something years. Yeah, 40 years. So, yeah, so more than 40. So I, you know, I don't know if I'll, if I'll find the Father Oak. I'm going to be just as like anxious and like <laughs> sure. on edge, I think, like as a, anyone else. Yeah. You know, it may be more so, right? Because I, there's parts of this is very real and, and parts are embellished. Right. Um, so, and that I'll never sort of share, but yeah, that's going to be exciting. Then we're going to get back in the van. We're going to go to uh, the tavern that is that inspired Dempsey's, or what what is people know as Della's sure. tavern. We're, we're going to go have lunch at Della's tavern. Then we're making our way back to Pittsburgh, and we're going to have a couple hours to chill out. And as soon as we've caught our breath, we actually have one of the most notable psychic mediums in Pittsburgh coming to oh, the awesome. convent on Halloween night oh, at cool. the convent to do so cool. a, gal- a gallery reading for us as a group where she will um, attempt to make contact with various people who have passed on, who are connected in some way to the people that are coming. And she has no way of knowing there's been no revelation. There will be no revelation. Um, even the Even the convent itself, the previous convent, don't know anyone who's coming other than myself right so it's what not like she, yeah right so she can't just like go oh well i've researched all the people i found the names on the list like there is no list there is a list but i have it and only i so my i have it my wife has it and that's it um no one else knows so yeah i'm excited about that um and then we wake up the final morning which is 
the what Wednesday, November first, we have breakfast mm -hmm. if we're still alive. Hopefully, we are. Yep. <laughs> and um, we say our goodbyes, and everyone makes their way out into the world. But that'll be my first Halloween arcanum. Um, so I'm excited. I'm pumped to do this. I think and spend like three days, two nights with all like some of my most hardcore readers is going to be a blast. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So yeah. Like, what an experience for sure. So like the attendees in their swag bags before you go to the little woods. They'll have a black hood, right? From the van ride. A black hood. <laughs> yeah. So right. Yeah, yeah. A bag, black bag over their head when you got a little hood. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> if I got a speeding ticket and that was a <laughs> people in the back seat? I'd be like, oh, Don't worry about just fine. Yeah. They all paid a thousand dollars to do that yeah, for yeah, our day. Yeah. <laughs> that's very funny that's very funny yeah, well all right hilarious. let's uh i have these all right i'm ready i have okay. these uh all right i've, I'm I've ready. got <sighs> okay so here we go okay. i have chosen 10 of these cards i didn't look at what's on them um but i have 10 of these cards so i'll ask each of you five questions i will give you the opportunity to steal so you may end oh. up with more than five points okay. so ag i'm gonna start with you if you all don't right. have the answer or get the wrong and they are multiple choice by the way Okay, um, I hope I don't uh, embarrass myself again. You we'll won't. No. Don't worry, I'll, I'll embarrass myself for the moment. I want this. Chris to look <laughs> terrible. So, okay, well, hit me. Well, here you go. I'm ready. What type of animal gave birth to Damien in the Omen? Is it A, a donkey, B, a coyote, C, a jackal, or D, a goat? Oh, it was a jackal. You're damn right it was. Boom! Yeah, mm -hmm. a very funny story about that. Uh, my wife. Uh, what about jackals giving birth to? The well, Antichrist? it's funny though. That is hilarious, <laughs> isn't it? Funny, yeah. it's super funny. My wife is reading. We were doing this whole like novelization thing, and there's a novelization of the Omen. And, I saw uh, that. Yeah, I saw that. And my wife is reading that, and um, does she like it or is it? Good she finished it. Yeah, she, she likes it. Um, oh, good. But the uh, the thing is, I'm like, I, I, we were laying in bed, and she's reading. She's next to me, and I go. Oh, uh, you know what's happening in the story? All I can remember is the guy going, "His mother was a jackal," and she's like, <laughs> "She's like, she's like, I'm not kidding. That's the sentence I'm on." Really? And she showed me the page, oh. and that was there. His mother spooky. was a jackal, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, spooky. All well, right. You know, Della, Della from my books would say, "There's no such thing as coincidences." Yes, she would. Mm -hmm. So, All what right. did that mean? I wonder if you had any weird visit. You, you didn't realize that that night there was probably some demonic entity just mm. hanging over your bed watching you breathe. Probably well, so. he still has a ghost in his house and he denies. I refuse to admit it. Chris. Oh my gosh. Chris. Okay. In which critically acclaimed thriller do none of the leading actors ever actually speak to one another? Is it A, The Exorcist, B, The Shining, C, Rosemary's Baby, or D, Silence of the Lambs? And I'm happy to repeat the question if you want the question again. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that might be confusing. Yeah. In which critically acclaimed thriller do none of the leading actors ever actually speak to one another? Would it be Silence of the Lambs? That's the answer that they have, but I don't. I was I mean, going to say that, but I was going to say, but that, 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 I know talking. that's yeah. Doesn't uh, she say, speak to Hannibal through the through the glass? Yeah, yeah. Does. Well, I guess that's not directly to each other because there's glass in between. I don't know. Know. That. I'm not she talks right. to Buffalo Bill. It sounded yeah, good. She does. And that 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 moment with, with Lecter is spawned the famous Deontay so, line. Probably means. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and Buffalo right, Bill well. talks to himself. Well, but that's <laughs> right. Or the multiple personalities. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. either one. I won't do the voice. I almost, I won't do it. Yeah. Um, hey, I, can I just throw in there? I did say, and I uh, did see, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, I wish I could remember so I could give them credit. One of the horror groups that I follow, um, they, I don't, I, I don't know if they're um, paranormal investigators or what, but one of the groups I follow, and they're not like this huge, huge like entity. It's not like sort of Hollywood corporation. I'm not sure exactly how they how this all worked out, but 
they were promoting that you could go to the real Buffalo Bill house that was in the in the movie. Oh, that that really has apparently a well. I was going to ask if that was there. Yeah, apparently, and the actress who played that part was going to be down in the well. What? <laughs> yeah, and, and you could meet her. Wouldn't that be? And that was happening like this this month, of course. Isn't that crazy? You could send Thanks her messages. You could send her messages yeah. in a in a basket. Yeah, <laughs> with a little puppy. Yeah. Oh with the gosh. autograph in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It takes the pen and it writes it on the paper. <laughs> All right, AG, back to you. Okay, I'm ready. Here who we played, go. Who played the mummy in the original 1932 film? Okay, hit me. Lon Chaney, Bela Lugosi, mm. Vincent Price, or Boris Karloff? I'm going to say Boris. You are correct. Sweet. Woo! That's my mummy. My thing. I, w- yeah. I wish I had some kind of like uh, bell I could ring. <laughs> I should have thought right. of that. That would have been yeah. good. All right. All right. <clears throat> I Chris, I think you're going to get this. Okay. Which horror film was not directed by Wes Craven? Scream, mm. Friday the 13th, Last House on the Left, or Nightmare on Elm Street? Last House on the Left. Ag, would you like to guess? No, God, no, no. Because I was going to say, I was going to say the same one. So well, your no. the remaining option. It doesn't hurt to guess because you could get okay. some points here. Your remaining options uh, are Scream, okay. Friday the Thirteenth, or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh my God! Oh uh, well, is it Friday the Thirteenth? Yes, duh. Ah, uh, jeez, Chris. See, I was over. I was overthinking it. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. overthinking it. Yeah, you did. Okay, that's, that's bad, and that looks bad. I know, I know it does. I <laughs> told right, so you already. That. So that gives me three points. You have correct? three points currently. Chris has, but one measly point. Okay, all right, all right, and actually, we're back to you. Uh, which horror series has been alleged to be cursed, with rumors surrounding the deaths of two young cast members and other mysterious events? Oh, I know this one already. You know it. You want me to give yeah. you the, the question? Do I, do I get two points if I if I get it right now? Uh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess right now. And <laughs> okay. if I get and if I get it right, if he gets it wrong, I choice. get three. If I get it right, yeah. yeah well, we'll give you two points. I love that. <laughs> All right. we make it for two, two points. points. I'm, okay. I'm gonna guess for two points, and if I'm wrong, then Chris gets two points. All right. Which would tie tie the game. Sure. <laughs> or I can put it away right now. Yeah. All right. Is it is it Poltergeist? The answer is B. Poltergeist. Wow! There it is. Look at that. <laughs> How about that? Story? All right, yeah. that's up to five for AG. Yeah. Wow. Chris, I'm so sorry. I, I right. told you in the beginning. All right. I knew there was one I was going to um, screw up. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> At least. In Chris, this is for you. Okay. In the haunting in Connecticut. What was previously on the grounds of the house that the Campbell family rents? Is it a cemetery, a coal mine, a mortuary, or an asylum? Oh, I don't know this one. What was it? I it wasn't a graveyard. I think it was a mortuary. That's your guess? Yeah. That's correct. Mortuary. Okay. Oh, very good. I haven't seen that one in a few years, but I remember that's that, what that's what I I haven't seen it I, since. Yeah. I remember the, the visual of there being like like mummies in the wall. <clears throat> Is that that movie? I think so. And there's like or, a lot of ectoplasm going on. Well, well there, I, I remember the remember. one where it's coming out of the kid's mouth during yeah. the seance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's probably it. Yep. All right, hit me. We're how? What's the score now? Five to two. It is five to two. All right, let's still make anybody's this for two game. Points. Let's make it for two points. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta follow the one point thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't look. You've already, you're already right. way ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, one all point. Right. Ag. One point. I already conceded this anyway. So in 2004's Shaun of the Dead, which of these vinyl records is not launched at zombies <laughs> by Shaun and Ed? Aren't you glad I didn't let you do two points? Uh, no, because I love this film. Oh, I love yeah. it too. Yes. Hey, yeah. Prince I just Batman. It the other night. It's is it A Prince Batman, B New Order Blue Monday, C Sadie Diamond Life, or D Coldplay Parachutes. Oh boy, and it's not launched. Which, which of on, those is, is, a, is not launched? This is a this is a trick question. Like they could just be mentioning albums. Just there's a million albums in the world. They could just be mentioning 
albums. Or are, are we talking about the one that they said, no, we'll keep that one? He says, is no, we can't throw that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can I hear them again, please? Sure. A, Prince is Batman. Uh, B, New Order, Blue Monday. C, Sadie, Diamond, Mon- uh, Diamond Life. Or D, Coldplay, Parachutes. And they don't launch it. Yep. I'm going to say... Oh my gosh. Now I'm feeling the pressure. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, was it Sade, Diamond Life? Is that how it's pronounced? Sade? Yes. Yeah. Sade. 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 Okay. Well, pardon me, uh, but no, that's incorrect. Dang it. All right. Uh-uh. What was the answer? Oh, well, well, Chris? Give Chris a- well yeah. by elimination, we know it wasn't Coldplay because we all would throw that record. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, have that record to begin with. But yeah, go on. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with um, the A answer or one. Okay, Prince's Batman record. Yeah. Well, you're wrong as well. I know, it, and it was the uh, wow. It was New Order. No, New Order. it was Coldplay. You guys. Are you? Kidding it really me? was. Yes. Are you serious? Oh yes. Look, these wow. cards could not be wrong. Okay. Can I say something? I didn't even think that Coldplay had that album out yet. I know, I didn't either. I wasn't was was... pretty new. Or it must have been. Yeah. But... Okay. All right, AG, back to you. Back to me. No, no, it's Chris's turn. Sorry. Right? No, that's right. It is. Yeah. yeah. yeah it turn. is. Yeah. Yeah. That was a steal. In 2017, Chris, which actor played Pennywise in the remake of the horror film It? Is it Bill Skarsgård, Stellan Skarsgård, Alexander Skarsgård, or <laughs> Gustav Skarsgård? <laughs> Uh, Which of the Skarsgård dynasty played Pennywise? Bill. You think it was Bill? Yeah. That's correct. It was Bill. Mm-hmm. Our boy Bill. Very good. All right. He's, I mean, he's talk about forward. an acting family. For real. I mean, you yeah. know, between the Northmen, Vikings, hmm. this, John Wick. Right. You know. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have a favorite? Do you have a favorite Skarsgård? The old man. Is that Stalin? S- Stalin, yeah. Stalin Skarsgård. Yeah, I like him too. I like him a lot. Just because, uh, do you remember the movie King Arthur with Clive Owen? And mm-hmm. uh, he played the Viking bad guy, like the head Viking in that. And he's almost unrecognizable. I like him a lot in, um, isn't it Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? Isn't he? Yeah. The... Yep. He's great. He's so good. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, G. All right, I'm... I'm chomping at the bit. How many? How many questions we have left? Two cards left. Two, Two left. cards All left. Right. Yep. Hit me. Chris has three points. Ag has five. In the 1984 movie Gremlins, which of the following is not one of the three three rules to follow for the creature? Okay. Is it A. No water. B. No sudden noises. C. No food after midnight. Or D. No bright light. Oh, it's sudden noises, correct? You got it. Yep. Sweet. You got it. All right. So now Chris cannot I cannot come technically back. come back from this, but I'm going to no. give you this but, one anyway to make you okay. feel better. All right. Make it a three-point question. Oh, we won't do that. No, no, no. 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 There needs to be a winner. <laughs> <laughs> which of the okay. sc- which scary movie, Chris, had the tagline, they're here? Do you want me to read you the... Like as in... The franchise scary movie? Or no, no. Which actual... scary movie had the okay. tagline there here? Is it Invasion like... of the Body Snatchers, Dawn of the Dead, Poltergeist, or it's the Strangers? Poltergeist. Yes, it is. Yeah. See? Should have made it three points. We'd be tied right now. Four to mm-hmm. six. AG takes the gold medal. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Because, <laughs> All right. You know, it had me confused a little bit because there was the whole scary movie scary franchise. Movie. Right. And they right. could have had, like, as the, the tagline with it, too. Right. So. I don't know about that Silence of the Lambs question. I don't. I don't I, yeah. Someone needs should. to clarify. If there's a listener who knows what they're talking about there. I mean, someone, I was just trying to go me. through everything, trying to think of. If you're in the Discord, like, please yeah. let me know in the Discord server, because right. that would be nice. Right. We didn't. Uh, we're not thinking of. Mm, no. Strange. Yeah. No. I don't Isn't understand. That weird? I don't, yeah, I don't know what that's I don't about. Understand. Is this going to be? Uh, is this going to be a Mandela effect? <laughs> Maybe it is. It could be. Maybe we're, it we're is. All, we're, we're all like, yeah, of course she talks to him right there. We come up with the fava beans Keontae line, 
yeah. then if you watch it, it turns out that never ever happened. She definitely yeah. talks to him because she's always like Doctor Lecter. Yeah, you know, she's down. <laughs> Hello, Doctor Lecter. Yeah. That's so great. I don't. That's there's no way impression. that. Thank you. I feel like I'm. I'm gonna look away. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Lecter. Oh my god, I got goosebumps. I feel like I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I will admit something though. I think I oh. like Brian Cox better as um as Hannibal Lecter. Okay. I think I prefer Manhunter to Silence of the Lambs. That that version of uh yeah. of him. Right. But they're both right, awesome. Right. I mean, both those movies together are just both Ooh. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. good. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, and Red Dragon is the continuation. Of Red Dragon well. is a thumbs down, Chris. I, I didn't say it was it was great. It's a I remake of of Manhunter. Yeah, yeah. Manhunter is better in all right. ways. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen Manhunter, so there you go. You, you oh. both have one up on me. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, excellent. Eighties uh, Michael Mann, beautiful. Uh, nice. Brian Cox is uh, Hannibal Lecter, and it's about uh, Will Graham catching. Well, Will Graham catching the Red Dragon guy. He's a yes. right. It's a yeah. different okay. kid. But so yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, it's a great movie. I, I recommend. Yeah, it. I saw Red Dragon. I haven't seen Manhunter. Mm-hmm. Have you guys? Did you talk last time we were on here, or did I hear your episode that I was not in? Because yes, I do actually pay attention with awesome. everything. Excellent. <laughs> I don't just watch the ones that I'm in. Very I'm happy. Not to hear. Thank I'm you. not a narcissist. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys talked about the movie Nefarious, right? I Chris did. liked it a I lot. I didn't it. see it. I, I liked it a lot. I loved that movie. I, so, I, D, I, DK, you didn't like it? I haven't seen it. He hasn't seen it. I haven't watched it. Oh, dude. See, to me, well, again, though, you're you're one of those you're one of those non-believers. So yeah, <laughs> I, and, that, I, and, I, and I'll admit that's why I didn't see it. Uh, so no, it, just, it didn't seem like my kind of movie. Right. Oh, it was. I think I'm going to tell you. I think that um, two of the best movies I've seen in the genre, and I consider them both gothic, in the terms that I use. Um, in the last probably couple of years, two of the best are Black Phone. And, oh yeah, and, good one. And and Nefarious. Yeah, both I was phenomenal. really surprised. Really surprised by Black Phone. Yeah, I love, I love Black Phone. Yeah. And see, for me, that's gothic because it's that um, there's a, that spiritual, you know, if you had to say, like, well, what defines gothic for A.G. Mock? You know, it's A, some kind of spiritual, supernatural element, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, B, sort of like that dark, again, pervading, right? Um, like mm-hmm. that sense of like what's going to happen next. Right. The vibes. Um, yeah, that vibe. And, and, like a sort of grittiness or graininess to it that you can't necessarily let certain je ne sais quoi that you can't put your finger on, yeah, but there's like, sure. a, like this sort of like grainy, deep, like this could be a real happening. Sure. And Nefarious, I thought was excellent at doing that. And so was Black Phone. But yeah, Nefarious, I thought was A+. plus. I didn't love the ending to Nefarious very much. Um, for me, again, see, I'm not going to bash it. I'll just say for me, there, it wasn't as good as right. it could have been. But I adored the movie um, to the point where I just, instead of renting it, I just I just bought the the download because I know that I'll watch it again. I thought it was superb. So you liked it, it was, too, huh? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. It was really good. And just the concept, it was just, for, for the majority of the movie, it was just this one-on-one interaction right. of, you know, what you really right. gave you a sense of like, what evil in real life day to day would be facing, you know, communicating with, you know, yeah, something that 100%. is true evil. 100%. I agree with you. I, the fact that most of the movie is just two people talking sounds like the most boring premise ever. <laughs> um, and yeah. so I hope I don't put people off by saying that. It's not at all, is it? I mean, no. Chris, if you, you, I found myself like, I said to my wife, I'm so fucking jealous. <laughs> I'll be honest, the, <laughs> sure. the writer who yeah. came up with that idea, and I, I still, just that I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to look him up. Um, I'm presuming, I don't believe, I've not heard of it, so I don't believe it was necessarily a novel first. I don't know if I'm uh, wrong. And actually, the movie Nefarious itself is like a continuation of the novel itself. Oh, okay. So it's, it's like right. a post- you know, and who's the, the author? Do you know his Steve name? Steve Dace. 
Steve what? Dace. How do uh, I can look it up. I can look it up real fast. Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I want it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I want to, and I would love to. If Steve Dace is watching, I would love to connect with him. I was so um, envious, like son of a bitch. How did I not think of that? Because to me, it was just the most exceptional premise, and um, I thought I thought the movie did it phenomenally well. Um, Uh, Looks like there is a book called a nefarious plot yes that's okay. it um that's okay so they they took it from that adapt mm-hmm. and an ad- adaptation it inspired yeah. the film nefarious and yeah it's steve i would say that it's maybe pronounced dees no D- it's days is it days d-e-a-c-e yeah, days. Mm-hmm. okay d-e-a-c d-e-a-c-e yeah okay yeah. d-e-a-c-e dees days days interesting yeah, days. you really think I'll it's days? I would say. Days. No, I know it's days. Okay, <laughs> he has a He's podcast like... that I've I've listened to once. Oh, or cool. Twice. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, thank you for yeah. correcting me. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I would love to connect with it. Super um, phenomenal talent, right there. I think I'll he lives cause... in Iowa, if I'm not okay. mistaken, or Ohio. What I... else is there One to do? Two. Yeah, <laughs> just write scary <laughs> things. Yeah. And any minute now, this is going to be like, hang, hang on a minute, I got his yeah. address here. No, no, no. <laughs> that one I don't have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I've been hanging out there a lot on evenings yeah. after midnight. Yeah. Outside. <laughs> he doesn't know. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, AG, I, I want to show you something. I, I actually went for a, a walk today. Oh, um, we, nice. so, we, so people may know, I think we said this already, but we had to reschedule this recording. It was going to be yes. this morning and now it's right. the evening. We generally record in the morning. So I took advantage of my afternoon and we I took the family out and we went for a walk. Um in a cemetery mm. and uh i came across something and i thought how strange um and i'll just show it to you and uh, you'll see what yes please and you're like my friend ag is gonna like this all right <clears throat> oh look at that see i bumped <laughs> into that today and i said well, i'm yeah. talking to him later yeah. how funny right well not him well i don't know <laughs> i don't Maybe. i don't know for sure yeah that's true you don't know for sure i i can i can i can put that one to rest that i am not at rest yeah. all right but, <laughs> but that one was put to rest yes it's not a very common name it's a german yeah. origin name it, it mock would have in german been um ma like when you go mock five it would have been like right. m-a-c-h right and then in some cases, M-O-C-H, and then it changed it, Americanized M-O-C-K. Not very common, though. It's Germanic. Oh, that, You'll that's see why it. it popped right out of me. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's so strange. <clears throat> that's And it happened see? to me today. Yeah. Today. And only because <laughs> I had to be a jerk and postpone. And, so and, it, and it, I would not have seen it had you not done that. So There's no such thing as coincidence. coincidence. There's a reason yep. for that. Yep. Right? There's a reason why you saw that. It was like, hey, there you go. I believe that's in that. Yeah, that's cool. cool. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Did you tell your wife and she was like, that's weird? Or was she like, whatever? She no, she 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 was like, oh, interesting. She's more of a believer in these things than I am. So, okay, um, you know, she's into ghosts and uh, spirits and things. She's been reading a ton of Hans Holzer books. Okay, yeah, Hans Holzer. Yeah, you, by the way, Dustin, would be the epitome of a, like, the perfect horror protagonist because you're the non-believer who is articulate you're willing to go out there and you have an open mind but you sure. just you just haven't been convinced yet that's you're me like that you're like that perfect character that i just want to put into a book and convince the <laughs> shit out of <laughs> well, i'll license this that's fine you can have yeah. it yeah <laughs> you know what i mean if you if you heard of um he's deceased now sadly one of britain's greatest horror authors is james herbert have you heard of this gentleman yes yeah Yeah, phenomenal writer having lived in the uk for many many years uh there was a a time when i sort of went off stephen king's stuff i love early king i have to be honest and say that i haven't had the opportunity to read a lot of newer king i did read later which came out i think about two years ago from him I just haven't had a lot of time to read newer stuff. Um, and I'll be honest, there's, you know, so many amazing thriller horror authors out there. I really would prefer to spread my wings. And that's just me. But I do love early King stuff. And when I went to England when I was young and ended up living there for 13 years, that magical 13 number, I mm-hmm. 
had discovered this author called James Herbert and yeah. completely different from King. Um, I would say like a more mature version of the way that King writes. Um, some people might say he's like more dry or not as scary perhaps. And I think all of that could be true. Again, it depends on your taste, right? Certainly. But I, I adored James Herbert's writings. He did Do you have a favorite cottage. From him? Yeah. Um, I love, the, I have, I have the magic cottage, um, sepulcher. Um, I haven't read rats, but people tell me that they absolutely love it. Um, haunted is another one, the ghosts of sleep. Yeah. And he's very British. He, um, just, I just love the writing. If you sort of think Agatha Christie and Stephen King have a baby, it's James, <laughs> it's James Herbert. He has that sort of that sort of melding of vibes, um, but he has a phenomenal character that recurs through many of his books um, called David Ash. And Ash is a an employee at the Institute of Psychical Research. This you know mm -hmm. this fictional research society in England that's a, a corporation, mm -hmm. and they do professional ghost busting. You know. Um, trying to put pay to, you know, is it really a ghost? Is it demonic? Is right. it just, you know, noisy pipes? But he is, he is you. You would, you would be that character, right? <laughs> He's James Herbert deliberately wrote him. It, it could, instead of uh, David Ash, it could be, you know, Dustin, is it Kreft? Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Yeah. See, um, because he's that intelligent, open-minded skeptic who puts himself out there on behalf of the Institute to, to investigate all these things. He knows full well that it's always going to be, you know, a air bubble in a pipe somewhere making the, the bumpy noises upstairs sure. in the attic. He knows that for a fact as far as he's concerned, but he does have 1% of his mind open to the possibility that it could be something else. Sure. And of course, you know what happens, he ends up coming across the 1%. And eventually, you know, becomes more and more of a believer. But yeah, he's that really, that really hardcore skeptic. And because of that, he's a great character. You would be that character. That's so cool. <laughs> That's why so do, cool. Why don't, why don't you believe? Uh... Boy, you, that's a huge question. Or, or to, or to <laughs> what extent don't you believe? Because I think it's like a grading scale. So, for example, would you say you don't believe in anything supernatural, or you believe in maybe spirits and ghosts and things mm -hmm. like that, but you don't necessarily believe in demons? For me, it's pretty much blanket. None of right. it's for me. None of it's for me. No, I love the stuff. <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm wearing an Exorcist T-shirt. I love this stuff, right. right? I really do. It's my most, it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite genre, horror, all this kind of thing. But no, I just can't, uh, I can't say that I've ever had an experience that made me go. That's it for sure. Really? Nothing. No. Interesting. See, no. If, I was going to say, if that's his character, I'm more Winston Zedmore from uh, Ghostbusters because <laughs> I've seen <laughs> shit that'll turn you white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm sort of with you both. I'm definitely a believer, for sure. I am, however, always a skeptic first because, and and here's why: not because I want to disprove it because I don't believe in it, mm -hmm. but actually converse to that because I actually do very much believe. Yeah. And what I don't want <clears throat> is for a charlatan to make a sham or a mockery of my belief set. Right. Sure. If that I'm, makes I'm, sense. I'm, I'm totally that. in in sync with that with you. Right. Uh, so when somebody not... says, yeah, so if someone says like, okay, Chris, they say like, I don't know, um, out of the blue, they just say some, you know, they, you pay her 20 bucks and she says, I just saw your dead grandma. And she says this and she's wearing, she's wearing lilac or lavender and yeah. Right, yeah. but nothing tangible. You right. know, it could be that she's just trying to get twenty bucks out of you. Right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll always go with that skeptical, objective view viewpoint perspective. I think first. Yeah. But I'm also open minded completely because I know it's real, and I just want to make sure that the person I'm talking to is legit. That they're not like yeah. a charlatan trying to take me for a ride. Because me, to me, that would just that just pisses me off because yeah. I've experienced too much and. I have to either A, be insane, <laughs> literally, or <laughs> B, there's something out there that I've experienced. Could be and a little bit of both. 
It could be both. <laughs> if you, I've decided recently that, again, I'm with like a big part of Della's character is me. You know, she has that, you know, belief that that she's spiritual. You know, there's no such thing as coincidences. A, a lot of that comes from my own standpoint on things, uh, the Della character in the books. And um, I do believe there's no such thing as coincidence. I do believe literally there's no, there's a reason why you saw that, yeah, right? Sure. That, that mock is the reason why I, I know the reason why I had to postpone until this evening. <clears throat> you know why, because I'm working on, you know, the final edits of the book. Um, but who knows if, if the reason that I'm slightly behind today and had to postpone is because you were supposed to see that. And, and who knows why, right? To me, I can't sure. tell you necessarily why, but maybe it will come to light, you know, in due time. Absolutely. And, and you know, I can't say I have any answers uh, at all. So, right. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, totally. I, I respect everything you guys are saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay if you, you know, if you don't believe it, what will happen knows. And I've had people in my life who have been very close to me who are absolute non-believers that's just all silliness and it's all in your head and all that and until right <laughs> match in the face. And, that and, one until thing. yeah until that one thing and then like well okay and suddenly it, it's the it's a completely different lens and when you start sure. looking through things from a different lens sometimes it's amazing what you see yeah absolutely so, absolutely i'll leave i'll leave my i'll leave i'm gonna drop the mic on that one <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to do it it's yeah. a good place to yeah do for it. sure i appreciate you guys so much i have to run i, I apologize sure you have, no uh, no that's what, a great place to yeah. end what it's um, 9 30 our time yeah. when we record this in the eastern sure. seaboard i have two and a half hours to get something to the printer so i don't want to have to blame you guys for <laughs> <laughs> well, we sincerely appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your time with us. And, uh, you know, it's every time you're here, it's a treat. Yes, Thanks for stopping by. Uh, and, uh, I, you know what? I couldn't, I couldn't reflect that even more myself. I love talking to you guys. It's a blast. So please, I I want to be the October guy. Like, I don't care how big, you know, anything ever blows up in a positive way sure. i want to be awesome i want to be that october guy because this well uh, once more please tell people uh where they can get what they can get uh yeah. and when they can do it yep oh thank you yeah absolutely so um book one two and three of the new apocrypha the uh, trilogy which is part of the gothic horror universe uh, that i'm writing um book one is the little woods book two is disciple book three is shadow watchers the Little Woods and Disciple are out now. Shadow Watch's release is October 31st, so just right around the corner. You can get them um, first and foremost on Amazon. You can get them from your local bookstore. You can just go online and type them. You'll get them in. I mean, they're available worldwide. So, awesome. but yeah, for sure. I would love, and I'll be at, in Annapolis, Maryland next Saturday, um, October 21st. 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if you're into horror and you're anywhere within, you know, an hour's drive of Annapolis, Maryland, I would highly recommend it. Because not just me, but, you know, more importantly, you know, people like Richard Chismar and other huge authors there. Um, I think eight of us total. So if you want to get like your horror novel fix all in one go and see eight pretty cool writers and get books and get them signed and get, you know, I'm going to have some free merch I'm giving away. And I think Chismar is too then just pull up to the Barnes and Nobles in Annapolis, Maryland next Saturday, the 21st. Excellent. Uh, one more yeah. question. Can, can people pre-order the new one or is it still not up yet? Y yes, you can pre-order Shadow Watchers on Kindle. Okay. Um, the paperback, which comes out on the same day, October 31st, it will drop at 12.01 um, the morning of October 31st, which is what Tuesday morning, right? So when we're in our Halloween Arcanum yes. um, overnight, as we're sleeping, it will drop. You can order it Im immediately. And then some people will get it within a day or two, depending on where you are in the country, once you order it, Excellent. or you can order it from Barnes and Noble or any other bookstore from 1201. But the pre-order is only on the Kindle on Amazon. Okay. It is a special price though until m tomorrow, m which is depending on when people see this. Right. Uh, Monday, what's tomorrow's date? The 16th. 16th. Monday night, the 16th, 
the Kindle goes back to regular price. Right now it's three ninety nine. dollars Okay. I'll so link that in the they, description. So if people want yeah. that, uh, I'll put a link there so people yeah, can go ahead and pre-order that. Uh, they, they can pre-order it. Yeah. It's like 40% off and it'll go back up. Um, like I said, tomorrow, I think uh, late night, I can't remember when they have it planned for. Okay. It goes back to the, the $6 price. But yeah, for sure. Excellent. I appreciate awesome. it, guys. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, guys. Yep. We'll definitely all right. have you back when you got your got all this done, and next year when you getting ready for your your next uh, of bi yearly uh, novels. Hell yeah! Look for spring, early summer for number one, first standalone. By the way, it won't be connected to the Little Woods at all, and all it's right. an exciting one. We'll launch that sometime when we talk later. But yeah, I'll I'm see looking you forward then, to okay? it. See ya. All right, all guys. Right. We'll see you guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Right. Have a good one. You too. Happy Thanks. Halloween. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye.